Hello, welcome to Explore Classroom. My name is Kip Hotman, and I am so glad you're joining us today. Many viewers around the world are celebrating Ramadan. We wish you all a beautiful celebration. At National Geographic, we use the power of science, exploration, education, and storytelling to illuminate and protect the wonder of our world. Explore Classroom connects students worldwide with our National Geographic Explorers for short lessons and time for your questions. Today's session is a collaboration with National Geographic Learning, National Geographic's partner in English language teaching and learning. Together, we are dedicated to reaching new audiences with Explore Classroom, and I'm so glad you're joining us today for our first event. Many students in our audience are in the process of learning English using National Geographic learning materials. I wanted to add that I served as a Spanish teacher for 18 years and had to learn Spanish as a second language. Communicating in another language is difficult and I'm still learning daily, my friends. I have the utmost respect for all of the students and educators joining us live and watching today. Thank you, friends, truly. Okay. Today, our explorer is none other than Carmen Chavez, a tropical biologist who uncovers the wildlife living in the Amazon rainforest using specialized camera traps. How cool is that? Here, how learning the English language has supported her on her path to becoming a National Geographic explorer. But before we get into today's lesson, I'd like to welcome our registered viewers who join us from around the globe. Special shout outs for today go to Muhammad V High School, EIS English Academy, ISFD 116, Kutvilam School, New Roots Charter School, Dunwoody High School, and all our homeschools out there. We are thrilled to have y'all here. And with that, let's get this Explore Classroom started. It's time to turn it over to Carmen to share all about the wildlife living in the Amazon. Take it away, Carmen. Thank you so much, Kip. And hello, everybody. How are you all? It's so nice to see all these faces. And I can't believe I am, I am invited to be into your classroom with your teachers, with your classmates. I couldn't be happier to be here. And I, um, I'm going to share my journey with you guys, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, what I've done it, and how much I enjoy it. So hopefully you guys can like it too. All right, are we ready? Yes, so I should share my screen and start this presentation. All right. Do you see these four kids climbing in a tree? Yes? All right. So I'm going to start telling you that, yes, I am Carmen Chavez. I am from Peru. And when I was growing up with my siblings, I just loved doing all sorts of explorations, like climbing trees and running and fishing. And I didn't care much about getting dirty. So I really had a very while, if you could say, childhood. And growing up with my siblings, we will be very lucky that we like explorations with the family and we will go to the farm where my family will grow potatoes and corn and we will just roll up a mattress and go on our explorations. And that's how we grew up in Peru. And I really enjoy this life growing up. I want to show you here how the farm is. As you can see, there's lots of very big mountains and you can see that we are cultivating corn. So my parents work at the farm and we kids were all around exploring the fields and just having fun. That's how I grew up. And I want you to pay attention here and how the mountains are in the background because I'm going to tell you more about them. So when I was probably your age, between, I don't know, 10 to 14, I had a visit 
of some people to my school and show us some slides about the Amazon rainforest. And I just was extremely fascinated imagining trees as tall as 20 stories, tall buildings. And I knew that there were lots of animals and birds of many colors, insects of all types, and this lush vegetation. I was fascinated and I told to myself, one day I'm going to go there. So I'm going to take you in this journey so we all get to see where we are, you know, our beautiful world. And I want to point out a few things here for you. There is South America for everybody who was there. Hello. And I want you to see this green big area. That's the Amazon rainforest. And if we zoom up in the, in the rainforest, we will know that this is so large that almost nine countries are part. And Peru, my home country, more than half of my country is actually Amazon. So that's Peru. And you can see also the brownish area is the Andes Mountains. And if we zoom up in the Andes Mountains, it's like climbing three kilometers up, like so tall, but you don't get to feel like the mountains are like so tall because they are like a plateau. And that's where I grew up in the city of Cusco, where I will go to school. And then from there, once my dream come true, I will descend the Andes all the way to the west into the Amazon rainforest. I will fly to a, a small town called Puerto Maldonado. And as you can see, the rivers, I want you to notice how the meandering rivers, just like snakes are, and everything else is green. But as you also can see, there's a lot of uh, patches of forest being cleared. And that's because we are transforming more our uh, rainforest into farms and using for different things. So as you can see, uh, it went to different places. I put a pin with the places that I did my research. And these places you either reach by, uh, by boat, traveling in a, in a boat, or if there is a road, you can reach it through, a, through the, the, the road. And also I want you to notice that like, for example, when the road is there, there is a lot of things starting to clear up. So we are, we are for sure in the Amazon, right? So from that image, oops, let me move. There is me for the first time in the jungle. As you can see the pictures are kind of old, they're not too clear, but that's like over 25 years ago. This is my first time at the jungle. And I went to a remote station that it took me four days to reach, one day in track and then uh, uh, on the river in a small boat. And we went with a small group of people, all researchers into this biological station. We didn't have much of buildings. I actually leave for three months in my tent. And we have this building here that it was that we call the bathhouse that we store our things to, to keep them um, uh, dry. And then the kitchen. And this is the people that I went for the first time. And something that it was really interesting is that we were very few Peruvians. And this is happening in Peru. There were researchers from all over the world. They spoke many languages, but the common language they spoke was English, no matter from where they come from. And this was really, really interesting to me because no matter what, they will be in, uh, in this place communicating in English. So I had my first experience, like not being able to communicate really well and because I didn't speak language myself, English myself. So I needed to learn. I needed to, to, to make sure that if I wanted to study in this place, I will be able to speak the language and learn about it. And in this, oh, I think I'm running out. Let, just a second. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm turning. 
my computer is running a lot of battery. I'm so sorry. There is. So anyways, I'm in the jungle. This is my first time there. And this is how the, 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 the boat ride <clears throat> is. You can see you're going through the, through the forest and you see those big trees. And there are other things that I learned. First, I told you I didn't know how to speak English really well. So I was determined to study English, to, to, to get to know this place better. And the other thing that I learned was that animals were not easy to see. And I got a little bit frustrated because I knew there were so many animals. I knew that they were big animals, colorful insects, and all these things that I wanted to see, but that was not easy. So this was two major things that then helped me make decisions in my life. In this station that I told you, many people had really wonderful books and they were in English. I couldn't read them well and they had beautiful, colorful plates. So I was only able to see the figures and couldn't read it much. So that was, that was a little bit frustrating, but I was able to learn so much through that with the, with the basic language. So as I was telling you, seeing the animals is not something easy. But now, thanks to the technology, we have these small devices called camera trap, which is nothing else than a, a photographic camera that has sensors. And if you leave them well positioned, they will be working for you for 24 hours a day the whole week. So you don't need to be there waiting for an animal to pass. You can record the animals by putting these cameras. And these are really small, as you can see. And then you set them up anywhere you want, anywhere you think there could be animals, and you let them work. And I want to tell you a little bit more how the cameras work itself. The cameras sense two things, temperature and movement. So. They have a detection zone, and if something in that detection zone changes as an animal coming into it, which has a different temperature than the environment, and it has movement, the camera activates and start taking pictures and videos without disturbing the animal. So if for whatever reason the animal decided to stay there, the camera will stop taking pictures because there are two things that need to be, right? Movement and temperature. And that's how the camera works. It's rather simple and very effective. So we have our eyes in the jungle thanks to these cameras. So I'll take you now and how a regular day is going into the forest. I did this work with many of kids, maybe a little bit older than you, but lots of students from this town that I show you. We will go to the forest and sometimes our path will be as simple and clear and dry and we will just walk without much problems. I wanted you to see how the slush veg vegetation is all around you. It's, it feels humid. The temperature is usually really hot and you might feel like you are suffocated, but it's a beautiful place. And as you can see, we have little, little paths that we walk into it and we get to hear many noises, but sometimes we don't get to see many things. So this is how a dry day will be in the forest. Not every day is the same. Some other times we will have some obstacles that we will overcome. And I want you to see here how sometimes, as we expect in the rainforest, rain rains a lot. And this makes the, our path a little bit muddy and maybe difficult and hard to pass through. But as you can imagine, and as you would do too, this people are using any resource they have in hand to make their path uh, possible, to cross this path. So they are, you know, trying to figure out how to do it. They are working as a team. And that is something very important that you collaborate and you facilitate the work. Because remember, we need to go into the forest and set up the traps 
And also after a month, at least when the tramps are in the forest, we need to go and make sure they are working properly. We want to make sure that um, we take uh, new batteries with us in case they run out. And also we want to make sure that we retrieve the pictures that the cameras have been taking. So it's, it's always an adventure, as you can see, and uh, we make it we make it to our post and we have our cameras ready to be reviewed, make sure that we have the location identify well, we make sure that everything is working, we we take our, ca we, our um, cards, SD cards, the cameras are recording the pictures in a little card and we take those to see it in our office. And after many, many months of work, we work on this project for over a year. Imagine that we got 100,000 pictures with all sorts of things and animals and things moving. And we are so excited. So we went through every single picture as a team. And out of those 100,000, we got like 6,000 pictures that were with animals in it. And I want you to pay attention here, the different details of a picture. Like not only that the animal is there, that we have to identify. We wanna know what type of animal is that. But we also have very important information about like the temperature of the day, of that day, the time of the day. And uh, we know of course where the camera is. So we have the location. Those are important informations because it will tell us about a lot about the animal, whether the animal prefers to move at night and maybe it's a nocturnal animal, or maybe the animal likes to do their business during the day and that's a diurnal animal. So lots of information. And of course, then you get to see wonderful things. How your heart cannot melt to see this family of wanganas. Those are wild pigs. Look at the little baby ones. And they are so unaware that the camera is taking pictures of them. So as you can see, they are just in front of it. And we were very lucky to capture this image. And I want to tell you now that in those thousands of pictures, we got so many incredible animals. As you can see here, there are different types of cats. We have a jaguar, a puma, uh, an ocelot, and they all are in different positions. They don't know how to pose for the camera. So sometimes we get a gray view, like the one in red here. Look at this perfect, the whole body. Other times we just get the sneak of the head and sometimes they are looking to us from the back so we get to see their wonderful bags or sometimes they pass so fast we don't get to record them themselves but these animals are really hard to see i have to tell you something when i was going to the jungle the first jaguar i saw it took me eight years going every year for months at a time so it's not an easy thing then i want to show you here something really exciting this guy, it's called a jaguarundi, and it's a very difficult to see cat. He's so curious, doesn't even notice that the camera is there, and decided to take a little nap. As you can see, this guy doesn't even realize that he's being filmed. And that is a good thing because that me this methodology does not disturb the animals at all. And that's something really, really important. Uh, and one reason why we like to use this. So there he is. Oh, I play it again. And then I want to show you this little, little monkeys here. And aren't they adorable? These monkeys usually live in the trees, up in the canopies, but sometimes they are so curious and they do come down close to the ground. And that's how we photograph these monkeys. Can anybody guess how big those monkeys are? Any ideas? Yeah? Well, I want to show you how big this monkey is. This is a tamarind monkey. And as you can see, his body is not bigger than a pencil. So it's a very small monkey. 
And as you can see, the tail is even longer than its whole body. So I wanted to show you how small these guys were. And then I wanted to tell you that nobody thinks of the jungle that has dogs, but we actually have two types of wild dogs. And look at how cute they are. We have these dogs that one likes to be solitary and other likes to be in a group. And as we, as we can see in this picture in the bottom, there are three little dogs running probably after a prey. Oh, I have these two very nice animals to show you. Anybody can guess which one of these is a rodent? You know what rodents look like, right? Which one of these is a rodent? The one in the green or the one in the red frame? Huh? Who guessed it was the green? Well, this is the rodent. And what is cool about this rodent is that it's really, really big. It is actually the biggest rodent of the world. And his name is a ronzoco. We call it ronzoco in Spanish, but we also call it a capybara in English. And these guys love to be in the water. They are really big. They can be as big as almost touching your hip. And they can be um, like really chubby. And they love to be in the water. So now you have seen the biggest rodent in the world. What I have less here, let's see. Oh, I wanted to mention that studying um, mammals in particular, like these cameras help us, help us to see animals of all types. But most of the animals in the jungle are actually rodents and bats. And those are not easy to see because First, the rodents are mostly small, as we can imagine, except for the ronzoco that I showed you before. And then the bats are always flying. So with a picture, it's almost impossible to recognize them. And also, there are so many species of different rodents and bats that it's not easy even for the experts to be able to identify unless they have it is so close that they can see the colors, measure the bones, and then see how distinctive they are. So I wanted you to also know that there's not just the big, large animals, but we also have the small ones too. They are really cute. Something in my study that came out that was surprising, it was that we also captured lots of birds. Birds that live on the ground, like this here, it's a trompetero. I can't remember now the name in English, but and these other ones are not birds that live in the ground. And they came down probably to hunt or to eat something down there. So, 30% of our pictures in this project turned out to be birds. And that was really, really cool and exciting because it's not what you think of it, right? We think of birds only flying in the sky, but no, there's tons of birds that live in the ground. And I think that is really, really cool. Well, so guys, I show you this book, right? I had this book, but it was in English and I couldn't read it. And I couldn't understand much. And I have now, after my project, all these beautiful pictures. So with my collaborators from National Geographic, we decided to make a book, a book of the animals that we got in the jungles of Peru. And we select only 25 species. And we create for each of these species a little plate with all the information about these characteristics. And then we share very important facts about it. We review the latest literature to make sure that we know everything. And we also include some little plates so people that like to do maybe art can color. And this book is available for you. And this is my first invitation in the chat. It's going to be the link so you can have access to the book. You can completely download it and see all these amazing pictures and animals. But, you know, we also got so excited about the animals that we wanted to make music. So we create a music video with the animals of the forest 
and we did something really different. We wanted to hear the sounds of these animals, how people that live in this Amazon call it. So we use, the, with the help of our Amazon indigenous friends, we learn how these animals are called in the native language of the Amazon. So I want you to also check it out this music video and enjoy the music, learn some words of the how we call the animals in different languages, and also maybe you get to dance a little bit. And I want you to tell me if you like it or not, okay? So that's my second invitation. So as I told you, we did this book. Something really important to me was get back to the Amazon and meet the students and teachers of the different schools in the jungle. So I went back there and I give to every single student and teacher a copy of the book so they can enjoy themselves. It's the exact same book that I am inviting you to see it. Well, I was so lucky that I was able to get back and now many hundreds of kids and teachers are using it to learn about the animals and the forest. So that was a very important and exciting date for me. And now I know you are an explorer yourself. I know you are so curious. And even if you don't get to go to the jungle like I, well, I did, you can be a scientist, you can be an explorer, and you can do something that is called citizen science. And this is um, accessible for you from your computer anywhere in the world you are and I have here hundreds of animals and pictures that you can help to identify you will get the help and little instructions and it will give you options and then you can you can name what type of animal this is and this is very helpful because we need your um, your input. We need your collaboration to be sure about what animal it is. And with that, guys, I want to tell you that before I finish, that learning a different language is not easy. I learned it already as an adult. And it was very important for me to go study uh, abroad and learn more about this place. But it was also very important because in our own language, no matter which one it is, we have our own way to talk, our own way to connect, our own way to express ourselves. So everything that we can learn, we can also share it. So with that, I am um, ready for your questions. And I hope you, you like it, this little presentation about who I am and what I do. Well, thank you for that, Carmen. And thank you for your passion and just the way you present your work. Uh, it has definitely inspired me and I know it's inspired our guests as well. So we, we truly appreciate you for joining us today. And thank you also to all the students and teachers watching. And we hope that you join many more of our events. And our next event in partnership with National Geographic Learning will be Wednesday, April 12th. Join Explore in Deep Sea Biologist Diva Amon to learn all about the weird and wonderful animals living in our underwater habitats. So go ahead and register for this event and more at natgeoed.org backslash, backslash, excuse me, Explore Classroom. You can request a chance to be featured on screen as well. And fellow teachers, we've also created a new interactive guide for you to share with your students to take them on a learning journey with each one of our special guests. Find the Explore Mindset and Action Guide and Teacher Edition linked on each event registration page. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Stay curious.